Hi everyone, this video is part one of the 3A series on development for AP Psychology students. This particular video will be an introduction to developmental psychology. So let's start with some context. Here is our unit three outline, and you can see that it covers two overarching themes, development and learning. Both of these are really broad concepts in psychology, and they both involve growth and change. There's a lot of content in unit three, so I've decided to separate them into um, part A and part B. Part A will focus only on human development and part B will focus on the aspects related to learning. This first video is going to cover 3.1, which is about the themes and methods of developmental psychology. These are the key focus questions for today's video. By the end, you should be able to answer each one of them. Here are the vocabulary concepts that you should take note of while watching this video. By the end, you should be able to define and describe them. So what is developmental psychology? Developmental psychology is a branch of psychology that studies how people grow and change throughout their lifespan. I've often heard it described as studying humans from the womb to the tomb. Unlike other areas of psychology that might focus on a very specific mental process or behavior, developmental psychology looks at a really big picture examining people over time. This area of psychology focuses on multiple multiple realms of human development, such as our changes in our physical, mental, social, and emotional abilities over time. Developmental psychology is also unique because it examines the interplay between our biology and our environment and how those two factors help shape us throughout our life. Ultimately, developmental psychologists hope to understand more about how we've become who we are and about what predictable changes will occur as we age. Since developmental psychologists are studying behaviors and mental processes over time across ages, they will often use one of two methods of research study, either longitudinal studies or cross-sectional studies. Both of these methods allow researchers to observe variables across different stages or ages of our lifespan. First is longitudinal studies. And just like it sounds, a longitudinal study is going to follow the same group of people over a long period of time. For example, if a researcher wants to better understand the major changes that happen in children with autism and how they face these challenges from childhood through adolescent years, they could gather a sample and then follow up with them and check in with them every five years and document how they face different changes, whether it's cognitive, emotional, physical, and social changes that happen over the course of their childhood and adolescent years. The advantage of this longitudinal method is that researchers are following that same group of people, and so there's less variation variables at play, and you can see how those specific people change over time. However, longitudinal studies are going to take a long time to complete, and in this example, if you started studying that sample of children at five years old, and then you followed up with them every five years until they turned the age of 20, researchers would need to dedicate 15 years to this study, which is not only a long time, but it's also going to be expensive, and you could run the risk of having participants for one reason or another having to drop out or being unable to complete the study. In contrast, a cross-sectional study looks at different people in different age groups or different cohorts or cross-sections. So they're literally taking a different cross-section of a lifespan and then studying them all together at once. So if a researcher wanted to study the changes that occur through childhood and adolescence in children with autism, they could gather a sample that includes five-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 15-year-olds, and 20-year-olds. The cross-sectional method would be quicker and easier since the data is all collected at once rather than over a long span of time. However, the disadvantage is it doesn't show how the same individuals change over time and the differences that the researchers notice between the age groups might be due to other factors rather than just age itself. So just a quick recap, cross-sectional studies compare different groups of people at the same time from cross-sections or from different ages, and then longitudinal studies follow the same group of people over the course of time. By combining insights from both of these methods, developmental psychologists can understand how people change and grow throughout their lifetime. 
Developmental psychology explores several different themes that help us understand how people change and grow over time. And the three key themes are nature versus nurture, stability versus change, and then continuous versus discontinuous stages. And I'll start with nature versus nurture. And this is the one that you are likely most familiar with because it's a concept that we have covered in previous units. One major theme is the debate between nature and nurture, which asks whether our development is influenced more by our genetics or by our environment. And as you know, the nature side is focusing on how we're shaped by our genetic information that we inherit from our parents. For example, a child could be more athletic than his peers due to his body composition and genetic makeup. On the other hand, nurture emphasizes the role of experiences and environment in shaping who we are. So that athletic child could be more athletic than his peers because he was raised in an active and athletic household. Most psychologists today agree that both nature and nurture interact to shape who we are and how we develop and grow. Nature and nurture is an important theme that psychologists explore as they research human development. Another important theme that developmental psychologists focus on is the theme of stability and change. And this theme focuses on whether different variables or traits persist across our lifetime or if they evolve and change. Things like our personality, intelligence, or behaviors. Researchers ask questions like, are they consistent throughout our lives or do they change as we grow? The stability perspective suggests that there are certain traits such as temperament or intelligence that remain consistent and relatively the same over time. For example, a child who is naturally outgoing might remain sociable as an adult. On the other hand, the change perspective argues that people evolve and they change over time with new experiences and challenges and life stages that shape who we are. For example, someone who is shy in childhood might become more confident and more outgoing as they gain more social experiences. So psychologists believe that both stability and change play a role in our development, with some traits remaining stable and consistent over time as we move through our life in different stages, and others evolve and change. So the last major theme that developmental psychologists focus on is whether our behaviors and mental processes grow and develop in a continuous flow or in clear stages. This is referred to as continuous or discontinuous stages. In some realms of development, psychologists see changes happening over time as gradual, smooth, in a slope that moves slowly upward. For example, if you think about physical growth throughout childhood, like growing taller, this type of development tends to build gradually and smoothly throughout grade school, rather than having multiple abrupt, clear spurts. The continuous view of development suggests that development is a steady progress where small changes add up over time. In contrast, some developmental stages happen in clear, abrupt changes or discontinuous changes or stages, very step-like where they, the shifts happen very clearly and suddenly. For example, some might describe the physical development that happens in adolescence as a very clear change and shift from childhood to adolescence because the physical and hormonal changes signal a very clear development change between childhood and puberty. Psychologists often refer to this debate as continuity and stages, or as you see on the screen, continuous and discontinuous stages. And this is just another way to look at and evaluate development. So before moving on, I just want to make sure you have a clear understanding of our major concepts. Nature versus nurture focuses on the interaction between our genetics and our environment. Stability versus change focuses on whether our traits endure over time or change with time. And continuous versus discontinuous stages focuses on whether we develop gradually and continuously or if we developed in abrupt, clear stages. So this brings us to the end of today's video. Let's do a few questions for review. Remember, I will read the questions aloud and you'll need to pause to determine the answers. Question number one says, Janice gave a presentation on how genes and environment interact. 
Which of the following was Janice most likely discussing? Now, the next three questions will focus on the same example study, but we'll have different questions. So question number two says, Dr. Hargan believes that development progresses slowly and steadily. Dr. Hargan followed a group of individuals from birth to age 18 to test her hypothesis. Which of the following perspectives best aligns with Dr. Hargan's belief? Using the same study example, question number three asks, what type of research design method did Dr. Hargan use in her study? Question number four is drawing on that same example study, and it asks which of the following statements best supports Dr. Hargan's hypothesis. So this concludes today's video lesson on the themes of developmental psychology. On the left hand side, you can check the answers to the review questions. And before finishing up, make sure you take a moment to see if you can answer our key focus questions and can define our essential vocabulary.